It's Dave Lawrence, The Workforce Afternoon, and today we welcome back a guitarist whose popularity and exposure in a wide range of mediums makes him, to many, a household name. From his background that connects him to Bill Wyman, George Harrison, David Bowie, and so many others, to his continuing presence as a smoking, soulful, extremely diverse guitarist, it's a real honor to hear about his new instrumental all-star CD, Fingerprints, and touch on his incredible life. I offer a warm aloha to the legendary Peter Fram. Aloha, Peter. Hello there. How are you? Thank you so much for being willing to be part of the show again. No, no problem. We last talked to you in 2004 when you were doing the Now CD. That's right. And uh, great timing getting you back right at this particular moment. I know Fingerprints has been out for a little while, but we have Pearl Jam in town. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and and uh, as I was preparing for the interview, it was, it was a treat to be able to hear uh, Mike McCready and Matt Cameron's work on this album. How did you end up getting hooked up with those guys? Um, it was basically started with uh, Cameron Crowe um, when I was working uh, on Almost Famous. We both played on the soundtrack um, of the... Of the uh, he, was, he, he was half the guitarist and I, I was the other half of the guitarist. <laughs> he did some solos on some tracks that uh, Nancy and Cameron had written and I did some the solos on the other couple. And um, so we got to meet through, they got to know each other through that. And then I went to, he came to one of my concerts, I went to a couple of theirs, and then uh, ended up asking uh, asking them if they would um, feel like doing a, a track, well, it ended up being two. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I asked, um, uh, I asked them if they'd be available or want to do it, and they said, yeah. Two very interesting tracks, too. A, a cover of a Soundgarden tune from from when Matt was in the band, and and then uh, this instrumental that if you go to PeterFrampton.com, that's the song that's looped or something, right, when you get yes. to your website, right? Yes. Have you ended up becoming friendly with, with Mike and Matt? as? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to uh, work with them again, and, uh, you know, whenever we're in town, I'm in their pl- neck of the woods or they're in mine, we, we contact each other, so... Yeah, we've stayed in touch, and, and they're really nice people. Well, the whole Pearl Jam organization is first class. Everyone's really nice and, and, and low-key and, you know, just easygoing. It's all about having fun, about making music. There's no... Uh, doesn't seem to be any angst there. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they seem... Uh, I've been around Jeff and Stone a few times, and, and they seemed really nice. And I'm actually... If everything goes right, I'll be talking to Mike McCready tomorrow. So. Oh, well, if you do, give him my love, please. Uh, yeah. I certainly will. They're special people. They really are. And another thing that happened, it was in March of, of 2005, I had Bill Wyman on the show. We had a really long conversation, and part of it was, was about you. Um, uh uh-huh. And fascinating to hear about, but in that, I believe it was the the track that it's ended up on here, Cornerstones, that he mentions having had recorded and bringing uh, Charlie Watts along. That's right. So so that's when that was done. That's the that was done prior to he had just done it basically prior to our interview. Does that oh, sound okay. Right? Yes, it he was it was right up the very beginning. And I in fact I got all the outside tracks. Uh, well, at the Hank Marvin, uh, the Bill and Charlie, and uh, uh, Matt and Mike done uh, before I did the the my band in so I wanted to get those well and when you've got a lot of people it's like each track is like a whole album's worth of logistics I bet <laughs> you know so it it became a little bit more involved and took a little longer not because I couldn't do it it's just because it took time to all right this date no not that date this you know what i mean it's yeah. just people scheduling and stuff so that just added some Downtime, but it was all right. I just went out and did some touring when when people weren't available. No, it's great. I I totally get how something like that takes a while to come together, and you have to be patient if you want all of those people. Uh, you're going to just have to work around schedules, and and uh, I think the results. Cornerstones is the track. Charlie Watts, Bill Wyman. You got the Stones rhythm section. I know, isn't that amazing? <laughs> Backing you up, and I mean, and you've worked with you know you've worked with some very heavy cats, so that's not like it's a. But what's cool about you is you appreciate it, and I know that you get off on on knowing that those two dudes are backing you up on this I know, I know. Let's hear that track now, and then we'll talk some more. Okay, great. Peter Frampton with Charlie Watts and Bill Wyman, the Rolling Stones classic rhythm section from his new fingerprint CD on KPOI 105.9 The Big Kahuna. This is called Cornerstones.
Cornerstones, Peter Frampton with Charlie Watts and Bill Wyman of the Rolling Stones from his new CD, Fingerprints, on KPOI 105.9, the Big Kahuna, Honolulu's only classic rock. Peter Frampton, our very special guest today. I appreciate you being available. No problem. And on Fingerprints, there are, in addition to the special guests, songs that, at least to my ears, remind me of, of other guitarists, too, in a very cool, nostalgic way. For some reason, Double Nickels evokes Pat Metheny to my ears. Um, yeah, you're not the first... I, yeah, I don't, I don't hear it, but I mean, uh, other people have mentioned that. Really? So, yeah, there's a. It's. I think it is that sort of plaintive quality about it that he he always uh, plays heavily on, which is nice. Have you ever heard of Strunz and Farah? No. They're like these uh, these flamenco kind of guitar guys. When I hear out and back, for some reason, that it's just like the a lot of the feel of this record. It has the kind. Yes, of... I have. I'm sorry. I have absolutely. I the, the names didn't register for for a moment there. Maybe now I wasn't you're mentioning pronouncing... what they do. Yes. Yeah, those, absolutely. That those dudes are, uh, and they're slamming guitar players. Oh uh, yes. And when I hear out and back, I don't know why it just it calls them to mind like immediately. It's a, as I was saying, the record gives you a feel of a lot of places. It's a, it's nostalgic in more ways than one. Uh, a, as you go through it, is it? Uh, and I'm sure that wasn't really an intention of yours. And much like having Warren Haynes uh, and and the blues track, it really of all the the people on here. I would say Warren is the most recognizable. Like when I when he plays, I know that's Warren. Yeah, exactly. As soon as he whipped out the slide there. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it it's it was a joy to to play with him obviously. So um, and I hope to do do more of it, obviously, as well. And and speaking of slide, I mean, referencing him in that way, you you did a gig. I mean, for the brothers, it was more of a huge night. But you're part of that night uh, at the at the Beacon, where, yes. they, where they had Gary. I mean, that's the same night Gary Rossington was there too, right? That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was then, it was a very a, a very interesting night. And then you so you were where were you when uh when Gary was playing? Were you standing on the side of the stage watching yeah, that? Yeah. You watched them do Simple Man with Gary. Absolutely, yes. And knowing that moments from now Warren's going to walk up to the mic and be like, "I want to bring out my buddy <laughs> Peter Frampton." Yeah, it was a great night. I mean, I, I played one number and then um and then J-Mo came over and and asked me uh, he, you know, J-Mo just sort of gets up and stops playing for a while, and yeah. <laughs> and and because uh, Butch is still playing there, so he just wandered over to me slowly and just said, "You want to play another number?" So I said, "Of course, that would be thank you." So I got to play Southbound at the end of the night as well, so that was great. People can buy this recording that we're talking about. It's actually a. Uh because all of those Almond shows are on sale. You know that, right? You do right, yeah, exactly. And, and in fact, we did Instant Live for our last tour. Not this one, but we did the last year. Oh, nice. So, yeah, as well. So folks can go back and get any of those Frampton shows. You can go online, basically, and buy them. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't heard that night, but it was... And then the following morning, well, following afternoon is when we... Did the session. Yeah, it was... By the time uh, my friend from the record company uh, had was coming said so have you started you know you're just getting sounds I said, it's done <laughs> 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 you know it was like uh it was so great because i said do you want to know what those chords are and no nah, no nah, let's just go for it because he'd heard the track and um i said do we want to talk about it or do we not and we just looked at each other and went nah so i nice. just played it and that was it i think I think out of the th uh, there was three takes total, and most of it comes from the first first take. That's amazing, and and it would. Uh, how long have you known? It, what's crazy about that situation is, uh, considering your career and stuff, you have you did you know the Almonds before Warren joined? Basically, I guess is the question. Um, I knew of them, and I'd met them. I'd met um, you know a couple of them here and there. You know, Greg at a show here or there, but but never. Uh, n didn't know them like this. No, I don't, not had at you all. met Dwayne? No, I didn't. Okay. Unfortunately, no. But you had. Uh, but that's you, you see where I'm going with that. It's kind of interesting because of your career, you worked with the brothers a long time, or you had been in the business and exposed to the prior generation, so to speak. Uh, uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, as soon as I came to America, the Allman Brothers were, you know, in '69, the Allman Brothers were, you know, up there already, you know. So uh, it was. Um, uh, Humble Pie were very into them as well. Did you just adopt residency here at a really? It, it seems I don't think a lot of your fans, unless they're you know, unless they study you, more casual fans, I guess is the way to say this. I don't think I think it would be a surprise to them to find out you live in Cincinnati. How long has it been that you've called America home? Um, well, I I moved to um, 
to New York in 1975, uh, January 1st, actually. Wow. I moved into a, a place. And um, then I've been all over the place, um, L.A., Nashville. Uh, Scottsdale, Nashville. I love Nashville. Uh, and that's where we do all our record, uh, rehearsing and, and uh, all the gears down there. And we, we all meet up down there to rehearse. And um, But... Um, no, it's just um, ended up here just because of family. Uh, my wife's from here, and we've got a 10-year-old, and we want to be close to Grandma. So that's that's why we're here, and the schooling's great. And, and so she's from Cincinnati? Yes, she is. And then what's, what's uh, even more, I guess, ironic, and I think listeners will really be, st- I mean, people who don't are not aware of this, it, Ohio is also, as a state, we're Clapton. <laughs> Right, I mean, like his... yeah, uh, Columbus, yeah. <laughs> uh, Eric, uh, you know, I see Eric on the freeway all the time. We wave, you know, but um, no, we don't. Um, <laughs> but yes, he has his uh, his uh, uh, Malia. lovely wife there. Yes, crazy business though that two legendary British cats who so many Americans love both are now based out of Ohio. <laughs> well, you know, I think what what's more important about this. It shows who really has the power in, in these relationships. Oh, the women, right? <laughs> and it brought you guys both <laughs> to their home, home areas. Well, that's, it yeah. illustrates several things. I mean, yes, that, that's, right there. That's one of them, and, and you're both really connected to our culture, man. I mean, if anyone ever had any doubt about that. Uh, how, how many times have you been out here to Hawaii? Um, I believe it's at least three. To play and stuff. Yes, yes. How long has it been? It's been a while. We've got to, we've got to come there. We've definitely got to come there. I'd love to have you. Have you been on vacation or just recently, or have you just not no, been here? No, I, I no, I haven't been in, in quite a while actually, uh, and we, we're overdue to to uh, come there to play or to have a vacation. Dude, either of those would be, uh, if you came out here, I would take such good care of you. If you just came on vacation, I'd get it. It's a nice limo from wherever you were staying. I'd bring you over to the station. I'd have nice catered, private thing, lots of gifts. i take such good care of you, Peter. I certainly... Uh, have you got your calendar out? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and if you came to do, you could do an acoustic thing or you could bring the band. I just hope that you, because uh, we're in a unusual spot and people tend to maybe they don't think you know they could come here and do a gig or do business right and, and uh we would love to have you were very supportive uh, and, and have been of, of your records and i just oh, want, i know you have you do good I, i'm I, and i've been uh you know that way for many years i first got to meet you long ago when you came to bcn and you did a thing in boston when i was right. working there and a really cool studio session across the street and that's when i got to spend a bunch of time and realized what a down-to-earth guy you were and that you are somewhat of an underappreciated player because you're a monster dude you have just you have so much soul that version of while my guitar gently weeps that you did for uh for george oh well thank you it's huge man yeah. and it happens again and again on this record so well thank you very much it's it's yeah, you're welcome very much you're just a uh i think a lot of people maybe overlook what a powerful guitar player you are um people evolve as they get older and you're a cat who's just evolved to be you know even more of a badass as far as <laughs> i'm concerned um keep an open mind to, to venturing out to the 50th state with your beautiful wife absolutely thank you peter thank you i really do appreciate it dude you're very welcome we'll speak to you again take care all right thanks